Hello, welcome to ChemBio and to A-Level Biology Revision. In this video, we'll look at DNA replication. Stay tuned. So in the last video, we started looking at nucleic acids and the differences between DNA and RNA in terms of structure. This time we need to have a look at how these nucleic acids, specifically DNA, replicate. Replication is important because cells in which DNA is contained have to divide. We learned this even at GCSE level when we saw mitosis. And for mitosis to happen, the chromosomes have to duplicate. This duplication cannot happen if DNA doesn't replicate because DNA is the component of chromosomes. So the DNA has to replicate, and this happens at a very specific stage during the cell cycle. And that is a topic for later videos. So I'm going to start by showing you the overall general idea of DNA replication, what happens, and then we'll look at it in a bit more detail. So here is our DNA molecule that is subject to replication. As you can see, it's all wound up in this specific double helix shape. And this isn't really helpful. Nothing can really happen to the DNA molecule while it's so... Uh, tightly wound up. So the first stage in DNA replication is the unwinding or unraveling of the DNA molecule. For this to happen, the hydrogen bonds between the bases, remember in the previous video we saw that the nitrogenous bases are joined together by hydrogen bonds. So these bonds have to be broken and the two DNA strands can therefore unwind. This happens with the aid of a specific enzyme called DNA helicase. So this is what happens. Now, as you can see, we have two strands which are straight. Nothing's wound together. Everything's nice and clear. Now the replication can happen properly. So the strands now separate. They move apart from each other. And as you can imagine, DNA helicase is continuing to break these hydrogen bonds between the two strands working from left to right direction just further beyond the screen that we can't see right now. So now what happens is these two strands, they are now exposed. The bases on them act as templates for free nucleotides which are found in the nucleus to come along and start attaching to them to form a new strand. So what happens is free nucleotides that are found in the nucleus that are actually synthesized in the cell but during DNA replication there are readily available in the nucleus. They come along to the exposed template strands and they attach to the corresponding base via something that we call complementary base pairing. We saw this in the previous video. So A always pairs with T and C always pairs with G. So if let's say we have a nucleotide which has a C base on the template strand, so on the old original strand, a nucleotide, a free nucleotide in the nucleus that has a G base comes along and just lines up with the C base on the nucleotide of the original strand. And the same happens on the other strand. But we have a problem here. These nucleotides, they're all separated, they're not attached together. So we need to reform these phosphodiester bonds. That is done with the aid of an enzyme called DNA polymerase. So here is DNA polymerase, it comes along and it catalyzes the formation of these phosphodiester bonds. The same happens on the other strand, however, in the opposite direction. And you'll see why in just a moment. The hydrogen bonds reform and now we have two molecules of DNA. Each of them will have one strand that is from the original DNA molecule, the one that was originally subject to replication, and then one strand will be the newly formed from, from free nucleotides in the nucleus. Now let's try summarizing it using text and we could do this for an exam question for example. So first of all, the first stage of DNA replication is that the DNA molecule unwinds or unravels. Do not say unzips, that is wrong. Unwinds or unravels. Then we have the enzyme DNA helicase which catalyzes the breaking of the hydrogen bonds between the bases. We now have two strands which are straight, they're unwound and they're exposed to free nucleotides in the nucleus which come along and they line up with the bases on the template strands via complementary base pairing, ATCG. Then the enzyme DNA polymerase catalyzes the formation of these phosphodiester bonds between the nucleotides on the newly formed strands. So as we saw, the nucleotides, they just come along and they don't attach with themselves. They just line up with the opposite 
complementary based on the template strand. But as you remember from the previous video, the nucleotides, they're joined together by these phosphodiester bonds. So this enzyme, DNA polymerase, it catalyzes the formation of them. Now, as you saw on the previous slide, the DNA polymerases work in opposite directions. Why is that? Now, from the previous video, we already know that DNA molecules have strands which run in opposite directions. They are anti-parallel. One runs in the 3' to the 5' direction, one runs in the 5' to the 3' direction. And that is an issue here because uh, DNA polymerase has an active site that can only attach to the three prime end. Yes, remember from GCSE we saw that enzymes have a specific active site that has a complementary shape to the substrate. We will see this more in later videos as well. And it can only bind to the OH side, the three prime side on the uh, deoxyribose sugar, it cannot do that with the phosphate group on the 5' end, so therefore it can only work from the 3' to the 5' direction. If we have a look at this diagram here, we can see that on the strand at the bottom, it runs from left to right in the 3' to the 5' direction. That's perfect. It comes on, attaches at the left, and moves to the right in the same direction as DNA helicase. So we can see that the overall direction of replication is also from left to right. So if you can imagine DNA helicase also starts at the left and it breaks the hydrogen bonds moving to the right across the screen. Likewise with DNA polymerase. However, on the strand above, you can see that it runs in the five prime to three prime direction. That means that this other DNA polymerase enzyme cannot attach at the left end. It has to start at the center at the so-called replication fork. So it runs in the opposite direction. This causes a little bit of an issue because every time that DNA polymerase on the top strand moves from right to left, DNA helicase breaks hydrogen bonds from left to right. That means that left behind the DNA polymerase molecule is an area that does not have the phosphodiester bonds formed. This means that DNA polymerase has to detach from the uh, newly formed strand, move all the way back to where DNA helicase had broken the hydrogen bonds. It has to wait for these bonds to be broken and then it moves in the same way back. So it comes back on itself each time. It detaches and reattaches, detaches and reattaches. And because it has to do this, the DNA replication on that side of the fork, on that side of the replication fork, takes place a bit slower. And therefore we say that this strand is the lagging strand. The strand below, where DNA polymerase works in the same direction as DNA helicase, that is called the leading strand. It takes place faster. There's no need for DNA polymerase to detach and reattach. There is a need, however, for this to happen on the other strand. Now, as a result of this periodic detaching and reattaching, DNA is replicated in sections. This leaves behind these fragments on the lagging strand, which are referred to as Okazaki fragments, in the name of the Japanese scientists who originally discovered this. And to finish off DNA replication, we have another enzyme called DNA ligase, and it catalyzes the joining of these Okazaki fragments together, so that we have one full integral strand um, being formed, so that we have two new DNA molecules. So this is basically DNA replication in a nutshell. This is another image of the DNA replication fork. That's what we generally refer to this as, and I strongly recommend that you try to learn this image so that maybe in an exam you can sketch a diagram that might help you gain a few marks. Even if you're happy with what this diagram shows, it really does aid your understanding with DNA replication. So once again, as you can see, we have DNA helicase which breaks the hydrogen bonds on the original strand of DNA. That DNA molecule needs to have its hydrogen bonds broken. Then the two strands, they split apart and free nucleotides that are in the nucleus that are originally synthesized in the cell, they come along and they're attached to the corresponding bases on the template strand. We say that it acts as a template, as it kind of makes sense really that the new strands, they come along and they attach to it. And the new strand, by the way, will be anti-parallel to the original strand. And the same happens on the other strand. DNA polymerases then joins these nucleotides together by forming phosphodiester bonds, on the lagging strand, because of the way that uh, the DNA 
uh, strand runs, DNA polymerase has to work in the opposite way to DNA helicase, which means that it has to periodically attach and reattach. This creates these Okazaki fragments. The enzyme DNA ligase then joins these fragments together so that then we have one full completed uh, new strand. And as a result, in total, we have two new DNA molecules. And we call this whole process, this whole mechanism, semi-conservative. Let's break this word down. Semi means half and conservative, conservation or keeping something. Basically, two of these strands that we can see, they are from the original DNA molecule, the original molecule that was about to be replicated. Then two of the strands, they're new because they're formed from the free nucleotides in the nucleus. So we have two strands that are new and two that are original. We can see that we have a one-to-one -one ratio here, so half to half, semi, so contains one new strand and one old strand. That's what you would say in an exam question. If it asks you about semi-conservative replication, you say that one is an old strand and is used as a template. The other one is new and formed from free nucleotides in the nucleus. That is it for DNA replication. I hope this makes sense. Please watch this video as many times as you need so that you get the idea of it. Please be happy with this before we move on to protein synthesis, which is the next topic. Any questions at all, any queries, please ask in the comments. I will definitely answer them. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for liking and subscribing. See you next time. Goodbye.